Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Journeys Tour Director series, an in-depth look. Uh, and my name is Lois Sarkeesian, and I am willing to share my experiences and knowledge of New Orleans. We're just going to take myself off of video. Uh, that way you'll be able to concentrate a bit more on the screen. So I've had the pleasure of traveling to New Orleans at least four times. And each time I go, I experience it uh, a bit more. This is our second series. Of, of our tour director series, and it will be all on New Orleans. Now, I just wanted to let you know just a few things. First of all, if you wanted to remove the subtitles, there is a place on your screen where there's transcript, and then if you click on that, you can remove the subtitles or put them on, whichever works best for you. Uh, we have muted everyone's microphones while I present, and then at the end, if you wish to speak or ask questions, I'll be willing to answer them, of course. And there's also the chat feature if you'd like to go ahead and enter your questions in the chat feature and I'll answer them at the end. And tonight's presentation will be approximately 40 minutes long. Now this photo that you see on your screen, I don't think you even need the words New Orleans. When you take a look at that photo, if you see it at any time, you can tell by the architecture, by the look that that is the city of New Orleans. Now, I'd like to share some information on New Orleans first before I start. So the population of the city is about 390,945 people. It was nicknamed the Big Easy back in 1960 by a local columnist. And she felt that since New York City was the Big Apple, New Orleans could be the Big, big Easy. Uh, New Orleans is in the Orleans Parish, which is the third largest parish in Louisiana. Louisiana is the only state that has parishes instead of counties, 64 in total. As Louisiana was Roman Catholic when the French and the Spanish ruled the area, the boundaries coincided with the state churches, parishes, and that's how it's remained to this day. Located, it is located 100 miles upstream from the mouth of the Mississippi River to the Gulf of Mexico. It's, it's quite a ways upstream. And it is the second largest port in the USA behind New York, New York City. Over half of the city is below sea level by one or two feet. And that's how um, when our Hurricane Katrina happened, why there was a lot of damage done. However, the French Quarter was established in 1718 and is one to five feet above sea level. So there was very little damage done there. Uh, it's very interesting when you go down to uh, New Orleans because a lot of the people that are, are born and raised in that area study the Acadians at school. And that the Acadians came from Canada, relocated to Louisiana in 1755. In 1750, uh, 1745, the British threatened to expel the Acadians unless they pledged allegiance to the King of England. So unwilling to do that, the, uh, they opposed the French and the because the king opposed the French and the Catholics, the Acadians refused. So they did not want to join the British to fight against the Indians who were their friends and allies. So the British expelled the Acadians. And eventually it became known as the Great Upheaval of 1755. So over a 21 year period, approximately 3,000 Acadians found refugee, refuge in Louisiana with a strong French background and Catholic heritage. Now, I wanted to just give you an idea of the area of New Orleans. So here is a map and you can see on here, the Mississippi River that, that, that um, flows south of the city and flows all the way down, like I said earlier, into the Gulf of Mexico. North of the city is Lake Pontchartrain, which is actually an estuary and it drains into the Gulf of Mexico. 
this is where the levees were located and, and where they um, where where they they broke. The estuary is uh, is um, an area of uh, of water that is is filled by lakes and by rivers and streams but then empties into the gulf of mexico so this lake is actually a mixture of fresh water and salt water now most of the time when people travel to new orleans especially for the first few times it is because of the french quarter it is the historical area of new orleans it was established back in 1718. It's about a mile long and a mile uh, deep. And this is about 78 square blocks. It's the historical part of New Orleans. It is the oldest neighborhood there as well. And it is considered a national historical landmark. It's located a good distance from where the levees breached and it is on higher ground. So that's why there was, like I said, light, light damage done to it. As of the last census taken in this area, there's about 3,800 people that live in the French Quarter. Canal Street on this side here, which, which divides the, uh, the garden district from, from, from uh, the French Quarter, is an area which was called the meeting place. It was where two cultures came together uh, from the Franc Francophone Creoles and the Anglophone Americans. And here, right in the middle, is Bourbon Street, which is the center part. And, and the, the Mississippi River would be down here south. We're actually facing north, east, west, and south on this one. This is Bourbon Street. This is the, the one that you hear. This is the street that you hear quite a bit uh, about. So it was named in 1718 by the royal family from France, after a royal family from France. It's lit with neon lights decorated with beads and balconies, and there's always plenty of music playing, especially in the evening. They open the windows and the doors to the wandering crowds, and the iconic bars are, are, are along here. That's where you would find Jean Lefe Blacksmith shop. And, and when you go in there, it's, it's really a very, very small place when, and, and dark, but, but uh, um, a very interesting place, and they all absolutely house is listed there as well. There is a jazz club, the Fissile European Jazz Club that has live music every night with no cover charge. It's a very, very interesting place. As you can see, uh, there is no vehicles on this road. Uh, and really, you never do see any vehicles even during the day. Um, I find that if you go for a morning walk, it's very interesting because all the establishments are cleaning up their area from the night before. Just because there are so many people, they just like to keep it as clean as possible, and you see that. Also, in the French Quarter and of New Orleans, you actually can get a drink in a to-go cup so that you can actually go from be between uh, building to building, bar to bar, restaurant to restaurant with, with a drink. If you're not done your drink, they'll just put it in a plastic cup for you, and away you go, and you can go from, from one establishment to the other. You can walk down the street. There are a lot of undercover police officers in this area, so it is very, um, very well protected. You will see very, very few cars in the French Quarter, and you can see from the picture that it's, the streets are not very wide, and that's because it was established in 1718. It really didn't change much from that. Now, of course, going to New Orleans, you want you go a lot of people go for the music there's there's lots of music there they have many many music clubs with all type of live music you can get tickets in advance or wait until you get there um, the jazz clubs go from traditional jazz to as what they call now acid jazz and you find them all over the french quarter as well as uh, the rest of new orleans uh, there's Cajun dancing, there's restaurants where you can go and have supper and then learn how to Cajun dance. The Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra is based in New Orleans as well. Now you'll see here Preservation Hall. So Preservation Hall was uh, developed back in 1961 and it is to preserve traditional New Orleans type jazz music. It works to protect, preserve, and per perpetrate the music and the spirit of traditional New Orleans jazz. Normally, 
they play every evening on the hour and you can buy tickets in advance or at the door. However, at the moment, I believe they're only, it's only like four days a week. It is located right in the French Quarter and it's about an hour long and you enjoy an intimate acoustic band concert from a current collective of 60 masters of the traditional New Orleans jazz. Um, and when you go in, there is very limited seating. Uh, so be prepared to stand for the 45 minutes. Uh, and it's just a very interesting place to go and listen to the music. Of course, the food, the cuisine of New Orleans. Uh, there's many different types, the top right, uh, sorry, the top left-hand corner is gumbo, and gumbo is the most popular soup, uh, soup in the state of, of Louisiana, the whole state. It is made from strong and flavored stock meat or selfish, and they have what they call a Creole Holy Trinity base. And what that is, is in every gumbo, there is celery, bell peppers, and onions. And then there in the center is crawfish. Crawfish, the peak season, is March, April, and May. You can enjoy them many different ways at many different places uh, and restaurants. The top right-hand corner is jambalaya. Again, the base is the Holy Trinity vegetable. And then meat, and like smoked sausage and chicken is added to it, as well as tomatoes and rice. The bottom right is the muffalata. The muffalata is a famous Italian sandwich, which was invented in New Orleans. It's curd meat, provolone cheese, olive dressing, and great bread. And you can, you can get it anywhere uh, in, in New Orleans, but most people go to the Central Grocers, which is located right across the street from the French market. It's like a deli. You walk in and you order, and then they'll, they'll cut it up for you. And you can take it out, or they have like a, a, like a, a bar stool area or you can sit and enjoy it. The olive paste is, is, is so, it's delicious, especially if you love olives. And a lot of people will buy the jars to bring home as well to try to duplicate it. Uh, and then on the left, bottom left-hand side are the beignets. The beignets are a square-shaped piece of dough that's deep fried and generously sprinkled with sugar. It's best served with hot, with a, with a cup of coffee, and the famous Café de Mont, which is in the French market, uh, does serve these. If you'd like to have them at Café de Mont, expect during the day to be in a long lineup. It's a very, very popular place to go. I have gone both early in the morning and later in the evening, and I was able to you know, be in line maybe in only 15 or 20 minutes, and then you have the option again to take it home or take it out like a takeout or enjoy it in their in their uh, uh, patio. Now they also sell the Cafe de Mon coffee. You can buy it regular or, or roasted and they sell it all over New Orleans. So just be careful when you see it. Um, you might want to compare pricing because it can vary, vary in price. There are a lot of restaurants to choose from in New Orleans. Uh, lots of popular ones. The Court of Two Sisters, uh, a lot of people like to have dinner there. Uh, when you end, it's in the French Quarter, and when you enter it, you have the option to eat inside or go through the building, and then you come into a courtyard that's surrounded by these old buildings, and, and they have all kinds of canopies and flowers, and it's just a pretty, pretty setting um, to enjoy a, a, a nice meal. Uh, there's also Brenneman's restaurants. They have quite a few in New Orleans. There's the Bourbon House, which is located in the hotel that we stay at with our tours. Uh, there's the Palace Cafe, which is right on a, a Canal Street, a little bit more of a casual place. They also have two more formal restaurants, which is called Brennan's or Dickie Brennan's Steakhouse, if you're looking to have a, a, a nice steak. Of course, a lot of, of chefs have restaurants there. Emeralds New Orleans uh, is located there. Unfortunately, at the moment, it is temporarily closed um, because of, um, of the situation. And here we go. 
Okay, so now accommodations. There's a lot of different types of accommodations that you can you can uh, find in New Orleans. Uh, some people like to stay in the French Quarter. Other people like to stay outside. This hotel right here is the Astor Crown Plaza. This is the hotel that we use on our tours. One of the main reasons why we we like our group staying here is because it's on the corner of Canal Street and Bourbon, and so it's right is so it's still in the French Quarter. And also because the French Quarter is so small and they only allow vehicles in there to make deliveries, um, you can't go in there with a coach. So when we have a group, uh, we're able to actually um, disembark them on Canal Street. So it gives us that, that uh, flexibility that we need. There is the lobby of the hotel and, and an idea of, the, of, of what the rooms look like. Uh, there, the, like I said, this hotel is right on the corner of Bourbon Street. So you just go out the back door and you're right on Bourbon right on bourbon they also the bourbon house is there a nice restaurant they have an oyster bar which gives you light fare a lobby bar there's a pool on the i believe the fourth floor to enjoy there's a fitness center so you know if you if you if you wanted to come back to your hotel to rest or just to do something different or to to relax you're able to do that with this uh with this hotel uh, if you decide that you want to stay in the French Quarter, uh, just because of the ambiance and what, and what is offered there, uh, just check on the noise level. Um, the Royal Senesta is a very popular hotel. It's been there since 1969, and it's on a site that was discovered back in 1721. And the only thing is, it's right on Bourbon Street. So you want to be sure that if you, if you don't stay up late, that you um, make sure you get a quiet room uh, just so that the noise from the street doesn't, um, doesn't bother you. Otherwise, any, you know, anywhere else uh, in, in the French Quarter should be fine. But again, just double check and ask. The other place that a lot of people stay is on Canal Street. This is Canal, this is Canal Street here. And as you can see, this is how wide it is. They've got a big sidewalk. And then they have an area for parking vehicles, three lanes of traffic, two lanes of, for the trolleys, the cable cars, or the, uh, the uh, street cars, rather. And then the same thing on the other side. And you can see in this photo, this is where the Marriott is, the Sheraton. Very easy to go into the French Quarter from here. When we, um, one time when I was there, I actually went to a football game to see the Saints play, and we were able to walk. From our hotel, we stayed at the Astor again, and we were able to walk right to the stage, to the uh, football stadium, and back. It was very, very convenient. And the distance. This is one of the widest boulevard in the United States. The distance from one side of the street to the other is 171 feet. Also on this street is where you'll find. Uh, you'll also find. Uh, shops on canal place which is like 31 stores and services there is a there is a walgreens there is a cvs uh, which are open late some of them have food in there so that you can actually go and purchase something to take to your room as well uh, but it's uh, one of the most popular and and busiest streets in new orleans now of course there's lots of attractions so it's all depending on what you would like to do when you're there Excuse me, still got a drink of water here. Uh, this, this first picture on the left here, this is Jackson Square. This is the uh, National Historical Landmark. And in 1803, it is the site of the Louisiana Purchase. In the background there is the St. Louis Cathedral, also known as the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis. It's the oldest cathedral in continuous use in the USA. And you'll notice right in the front, there are some carriages right here. So you can, you can hire a carriage to take you for a, a stroll through the French Quarter. You can include the above ground cemetery, number one here. Sorry, no, this is St. Peter's Cemetery. Um, and they would include that for you because even though the St. Peter's Cemetery is in the French Quarter, you can go to it. They do charge to go into that cemetery. And just, uh, just a, a hint here, if you were to uh, want to rent one of these carriages, if you would like a quiet ride through French Quarter, then I would base, your, your, base that on how talkative the driver is when you're speaking to him about uh, taking a ride. Some drivers tend to be quiet, 
then therefore you'll enjoy more of a quiet ride. If you want to hear a lot of stories, uh, personal stories, stories of the French Quarter, then a then a chatty driver is what you want. I know this. I, this happened when I was uh, in New Orleans and also in New York City. Uh, it uh, it makes it uh, a little bit more pleasant depending on what you what you're looking for. Uh, of course, the School of Cooking. There's the New Orleans School of Cooking. It's located right in again the French Quarter. It's an opportunity for some fun folk food and folklore. The only thing is, I uh, I did it one time when I was there and I enjoyed it. However, it does take time. It took the whole morning. By the time you learn about it and you um, and and you watch them and they let you taste it, it does take part of the day uh, for them. The above ground cemeteries are very common there because of the water levels are very high underground. Uh, St. Peter's Streets Graveyard is the one that's in the French Quarter. There is also the St. Louis Cemetery number one and number two. 90% of the burials in New Orleans still are above ground. Uh, when you can reuse the tombs, uh, so when you go for a tour, they'll tell you this, the, you can reuse these tombs, but if you were to put um, a body in one of the tombs and you wanted to open it again, you had to wait a year and one day before you're allowed to add an, another body into the tomb. And you may have heard that saying, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. And that is where this came from. Because when they open the tombs, what they do is they use uh, a utensil, something like a broom to push uh, um, uh, the uh, contents to the back, and then they were able to add another another body in there. Now there are other attractions, uh, of course. Uh, the the National World War II Museum that is fairly new. The very first time I went uh, uh, in two thousand and five, they did not have it there. Um, they built it, and it is officially the U World War II Museum of the USA. It tells the story of the Americans' experience, why it was fought, how it was won, and what it means today. I have taken tours uh, down to New Orleans, and some people have gone to the museum and, and they've told me how good it is. They really, really um, uh, enjoyed the uh, museum itself. Now, you have an option when you go. There is a movie you can watch that's narrated by Tom Hanks, or you can buy a pass into the museum. And you can get there. Um, it's not very far if, if you took a trolley to get there. Uh, a little bit still of a, a bit of a walk, but it is uh, in sort of past, it's sort of uh, west of the uh, of the uh, French Quarter of the French Quarter. Uh, the, there is a casino at the end of Canal Street. So again, if you stayed at the Astor Crown Plaza, you go out the door, turn left, and walk down a few blocks, and you'll find the the uh, casino. There is a it is about 115 square feet sorry, 115,000 square feet of casino space with 2,100 slot machines and over 90 table games and a poker room as well. The French market is a very interesting place to visit as well. It, it is in the French Quarter. I remember I was talking earlier about the grocery market is just across the street where you can buy the La Falada, the central grocery. Uh, it spans about six blocks. Now, it started, it was first built in 1791, and it is the oldest of its kind in the United States, but it has been built, destroyed, rebuilt quite a few times over the years. There's a farmer's market, a flea market, eateries, cafe style dining, shopping, souvenirs, and there's always music playing. Uh, you, you can roam the whole area and you can you know, pick up some food and sit down and uh, just listen to the music. Uh, it does provide a little bit of shade in the summer, you know, if you were to go in the summer months when it's hot, but a, a very uh, interesting place where you can find all kinds of, of, of mementos from New Orleans. Then there's the streetcars. So they call them trolleys as well. There are five routes with the streetcars. There's the Riverfront, St. Charles, Canal Street, Rampport Street, and the UPT line. It's very affordable to ride. It's only a dollar twenty-five. Exact change though. So every time you get on, you pay a dollar twenty-five, but there's no change given. So you have to have exact change. Or you can buy what they call a one-day jazzy pass. It's three dollars. 
you could buy a three day pass for nine and then they have a full month for 55. But as you can see from this photo, the green trolley here, they're not air conditioned. Uh, so they uh, and they they make all kinds of stops and you can just ride them just to just to do like a, a, a tour of the area. The St. Charles one is the one this one here, which is dark green is the oldest continuously operating streetcar line in the world. It is a symbol of charm and romance because it goes through the garden district. When you ride this trolley, you ride through the tunnels of live oaks, you pass dozens of antebellum mansions, you see the two universities located there, Loyola and, and Tulane, and, and it goes by Auburn Park, which you can actually, you know, if you buy a pass, you can get on and off all day while, while riding it. So New Orleans, of course, is known for Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is a very, very special time of the year for them. Uh, two weeks, actually, before Ash Wednesday is when they start their parades. So there is one major parade each day. There are many days where there are several parades. And they have masquerade balls as well. The last five days of the two weeks is the most elaborate parade. And the parades are organized by social clubs called crews, K-R-E-W-E-S, crews. They, they plan, once a parade is over, they start planning for the following year. The schedule and the route each year is pretty well standard, uh, but uh, you can go anywhere in New Orleans. They are everywhere. They're not always just on Canal Street or in the French, uh, in the, uh, French Quarter. And there is one street in in the garden district when you go down it you still see all the beads hanging from the trees because there's so many trees and there are just so many beads up there uh, they just leave them there year after year if you wanted to learn more about the mardi gras parades and the and the uh, floats there is mardi gras world that you can go to while you're down there it's th it's a 300,000 square foot working warehouse where the floats are made for the parade. So you can get up and close and um, personal with them and see how they're made, the, what goes into making them, how the colors are, uh, is just spend some time uh, at, this, uh, at this warehouse. Or in the French Quarter, there's also the Mardi Gras Museum of Costumes and Culture. And this is a private collection of costumes of Carl Mack, which tells the story of the masquerade balls and the parades. When I went there, it was very interesting to learn about how they, how they uh, make the, the floats and all the colors that they use and, and what everything means. So you also learn about who and how you go about entering a float in the parade. So Steamboat River Cruise, down in the French Quarter, uh, just at the river, there are a couple of companies that offer the Steamboat River Cruise on the mighty Mississippi. They offer day and evening cruises with dinner or brunch or lunch, always with live music. And if you're fortunate enough, you're able to go into seeing the, they have tours of the engine room to explain everything, how the, how the steamboats work. Uh, you can go inside, outside, they have music playing. There is always a gift shop on board. For, for mementos, uh, you, you usually have a set dining time, like, you know, whether it's like six o'clock or seven o'clock, or uh, like for dinner, for example, and you're, you're free to move around. It's, it's narrated, so you get to learn about the Mississippi. And like I said earlier, that port is the second largest port in the USA. Now this moving out of, out of New Orleans, so while you're there, you can, if you wanted to arrange to see a little bit more of, on the outskirts of New Orleans, I do suggest a swamp tour. This is a lot more interesting than I ever thought it was going to be. The company that we use is called Honey Harbor Swamp Tour. Uh, they've been around since 1972, and all their boats are Coast Guard inspected, licensed guides, native professionals. I remember talking to one of the drivers once, and he waited five years to be hired by this company because they have such a good reputation. Uh, you do go out into the Cypress Swamp. Uh, you basically go down a river and then into the swamp and they, they, they tell you all about the stories of them. 
uh, and they bring food with them. So there's a good chance you'll see alligators. A lot of times you'll see small ones, large ones, especially if it's a sunny day, they'll, they'll, they'll sun in the, on the logs uh, and they'll do, they will come up to the boats um, and you can see them up close and personal. They also have, uh, we also saw local snakes and spiders, uh, very, very, very safe, very interesting. Uh, what I found most interesting is the river that we took to get down into the swamp area. There were beaches uh, and there's homes and cabins uh, people have there. And when I saw the beaches, I, I questioned it. And he said, oh, no, we swim in the water. And if he goes, the alligators won't bother you. I, I found that so surprising. Um, they do have a little bit of an issue with feral pigs uh, in the area. So they also hear the boats coming. So you, you'll get a... a, a You'll get a greeting from them as well. But again, the, the cruise itself is about two hours. It's in a town called Sedell, which is about, about half an hour outside of New Orleans. So again, it would, it would take about a half a day to do the tour, a tour pop, proper. And then of course, there is the plantation homes in the area. So we visit two of them. Uh, this one, first one is the Nottaway Plantation. And you can see on the right here, how beautiful this home is. It was built in 1859. It has 53,000 square feet. And on the property, there are oak trees that are 162 years old. What's interesting about this uh, home or mansion is the staircase in the front. There are two of them. At the time that it was built, it was proper for men not to see women's ankles. So John Randolph, wanted two staircases, one for the men to go up and one for the women to go up. And you can actually go and stay at this home. This is, it is a resort as well now. And this home does have an elevator so that when you visit it, you will be able to take the elevator and go up to the second floor. Because when you go up to the second floor and look out, it, the house faces uh, east. So when you look out, you can see the levee and the Mississippi River. It was built facing the Mississippi River. Uh, the, when it was built, John Randolph uh, destroyed the architect plans for the home because he did not want anybody else building the same type of home. And here on the right, you can see the home. And if you were to stay there, you can see the tennis courts, there's cottages if you prefer, restaurants. The courtyard here is lovely. Uh, and we, act, we, we come here first to do a tour in the morning, and then we have lunch here before we move on to our next, uh, next plantation. Of course, this place is rented out for weddings as well. It's a very popular, uh, popular spot. Oak Alley Plantation is the one that you may have seen a lot in advertising. Because this photo here on the left is the, uh, the live oak trees here. So these live oak trees form a canopy path directly to the house. The path itself is about 800 feet long. And these oak trees were planted in the early 18th centuries before the house was even built. So you're looking at the house from the road and then the, the, the house is a museum. So when you visit it and you're able to go to the second floor, you can look out and take pictures of the uh, oak trees as well. Uh, you'll see here on the, on the right-hand side, uh, the layout of the grounds. Uh, it is a very interesting place. It's different from the other Norway plantation. Uh, it is a bit of a walk from the parking lot to the home, but they do have golf carts there that, that will take you if, if the walk is too long, but it's very pretty because they have manicured grounds. It's quite, quite gorgeous. Uh, the big house is, like I said, is a museum. So it does not have an elevator. So if you're not able to do the stairs, they do have a video room that you can go in and watch and, and take and they'll do a narration about what's upstairs. What's interesting here is they have a mint julep uh, station right here. Uh, so when, what happens is you go there and you have to wait to go into the house because they only allow so many people, um, so many groups in at a time. And the mint, it's an opportunity to have a mint julep. It is, it is delicious, especially when it's warm. You can share it, of course. It consists of bourbon, sugar water, crushed ice, and fresh mint. When you go into the home, the, the guide is in 
period costume. And like I said, you're able to go out, out upstairs and outside as well. When you're done there, you can make your way back down here to the restaurant, the gift shop. There are some, I'm going to show it on here, but last time I was there, they did have some of the areas where the, uh, where they have the uh, slavery exhibit, uh, because this was a sugar plantation. Uh, and now they've got these cottages along here that you can go and stay here as well. A little bit more on the quiet side uh, in comparison to Nottoway, but, um, but it does give you the opportunity to be able to stay uh, on a plantation if you wish. Now, traveling to New Orleans. So this is just something I wanted to share with you. Um, you know, when you, if you were to, of course, you could drive there, but if you were to fly down, we always fly down from Toronto with Air Canada. And one of the main reasons we do that is because the flight is nonstop. We are there in under three hours from Toronto. So it doesn't take away too much time from that day. If, if you were to fly from Buffalo, you would have to change planes. So depending how long you're going to New Orleans for, if you're, you know, if you're going for a short period of time, you're going to spend a, a, you know, two days getting there and getting back. So you want to make sure you give yourself enough time in between. However, if you were to fly from Toronto because of the nonstop flight with Air Canada, you're down there in less than three hours. Uh, also, the aircraft is not very large. I don't need, it's about 80 people, 85 people. Uh, so it doesn't go too high. So you get a little bit of a view from the plane. This airport, they are so proud of the airport uh, in New Orleans. It's not a very big airport, not very far from the city either, but um, it, it, um, it's easy to, to arrive and depart from there. However, uh, when you're down in New Orleans, you just can't do anything fast. If you ask for anything, the hotel, when we check in, they just take their time. They don't seem to rush. And I think that has a lot to do with the heat, of course. It's quite warm down there, in, especially in the, in the summertime. And just remember that if when you're flying or um, from Toronto down to New Orleans, if you are not American or Canadian, you want to make sure you have the proper visas or waivers to fly down. Now we have our tour uh, that goes to New Orleans every year. Uh, and we have it in place for 2022. It's May 1st to the 5th. It is a tour that we have, have run yearly since 2012. Of course, this year and last year, we were not able to go. Our, our tour includes the round trip air, airport transfers from our office here in Thorold. You're allowed to park your vehicle here while you're away. Return airfare Toronto to New Orleans with Air Canada economy class. If you wanted to make your own way there and meet the group there, that's possible as well. We would just remove the airfare portion of this from there. Or if you have aeroplan points and you want to use those, we can tell you what flights we're on and people have done that in the past. We spent four nights at, in the French Quarter at the Astor Crown Plaza, like I mentioned. Breakfast is included each morning. We have a guided city tour of New Orleans in the morning. Uh, Wolf is normally our guide. I'm just hoping he's not going to retire anytime soon. Uh, he is very, very um, eager to answer all your questions. He tells you a lot about the city. He's easy to follow, uh, and, and you're not always on the coach. He takes you to, he takes you to the park. He takes you to uh, the above ground cemetery. Uh, just um, a, a great way to start your trip there, so it gives you your bearings. In the afternoon, we head out to Sedell to uh, do the swamp tour. The following day, we have uh, the full day at the Nottoway Plantation with lunch, followed by the Oak Alley Plantation. And then the next day is a free day for you. So you have your free day from breakfast up until dinner for the dinner cruise. And that, uh, that will give you time to be able to you know, walk the French Quarter, visit any of these places that I mentioned, um, other places that you may find, enjoy some nice um, lunches uh, at different places. All transfers are included in New Orleans. There is someone at the services of a CA tour director goes along with you, baggage handling, and your local gratuities are included. So this is our second tour director series. Our first one was on May the 15th. It was Quebec's Fairmount Moments. If you missed it and would like information on it, it is on our website. You can listen to it there. We have two more up and coming, excuse me, Sorry. Uh, on July 18th, we have our Newfoundland and Labrador. 
and on August 17th, Italy Bellissimo. Uh, you can register for these events just like you did for this one on our website there. And I'd like to thank you very much for, for, uh, for joining me this evening. It was a, a pleasure to talk to you about New Orleans. I just love that place. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting place to go. The people are, especially the people that are born and raised there, they're so um, giving of their information of their life there and, and, and it's so full of history. Uh, if you have any questions or like to call us, there's our email address and our phone number. I will open and check to see, uh, I will check to see if we have any uh, questions at the moment. Let's double check here. No, I don't have any questions. If anybody has them, you can, you can type it in the chat and I'll be able to uh, answer them for you. Um, if not, uh, you can definitely call me or email me at journeys at CAA Niagara. I can, I can, It'd be a pleasure to speak to you. Oh, we have a question. Just one moment. Can I go back a slide? Of course I can. Just one moment. Uh, I think I can. I can. There we are. Is this the slide you were looking for? It was Judy. The cost of the tour, the cost of the tour is on our website. So I, I need you to go on there because it depends if you're single, double or triple. It is in Canadian dollars and it does describe what you're doing every day on the tour. So if you do go to our website, all the information is there. There is a flyer there that gives you all of it. And it also tells you what the deposits and, and when payments are due as well. Are there any other questions? Yeah, there's a chat box and a question and answer box as well. All right. Well, again, thank you very much for joining me this evening. If you have any other questions or would like to speak to me, please contact me. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Good night.